Hi, let's look at how you can use Automate Studio to query data from SAP to Excel. Studio has three business author modules. Transaction allows you to easily and quickly upload data to SAP. Query allows you to easily extract real-time SAP data for reporting and data maintenance purposes. Direct allows you to work with SAP BAPIs and remote enable function modules. You can build an SAP data script in three easy steps. Step one is to create the script. In this case, we'll select the tables and fields needed for the query. Second, you map it, so we'll map the fields to Excel. And third, we'll run the script, and this will pull the data live from SAP to Excel. With Studio Query, you have real-time SAP data extraction for reporting and data maintenance purposes. So we'll be able to extract data directly from SAP into Excel or Access. The user will have a visual interface to easily drag and drop in order to create the queries. The queries can be executed without slowing your system performance and an extra layer of security can be added on top of your SAP security. Query can be combined with transaction to automate an end-to-end -end process. In a round-trip scenario, you can use query to extract the data, manipulate the data, and then use transaction to upload the data. You can link scripts to create an end-to-end -end solution with multiple transactions and queries running on a sequence. You can also schedule your queries to run at any time and run them as a background process. For this query demo, I'll first show how you can select the tables and fields. Second, I'll set the criteria fields, and these are the fields we're going to filter by. Third, I'll show a preview run and how you can see the number of entries. Fourth, I'll map the query to an Excel file. And fifth, we'll run the script so you can see a live data pull from SAP to Excel. Here within Studio, you can see our three modules, and we'll go ahead and create a query script. So we will log in SAP using my SAP credentials. And as I mentioned, we do adhere to your SAP security. So if I didn't have access to these tables, I wouldn't be able to access it through Studio. The first step to create this query script is to select the tables and fields. You can search for tables and fields in this area. You can also use the data dictionary. You can see the different functional areas of SAP. And we have a transaction code section where you can view the tables within those. I'll go ahead and just enter a couple tables, and we'll add them to the workspace. As you can see, joins are automatically added, and those can be converted to left outer joins or removed if needed. You can also add joins if needed. So now that we have our tables, we'll go ahead and select our fields. The criteria fields are what we'll filter by, and the output fields are what we will see in our Excel file. Now that we've selected our fields, let's move on to the criteria tab. So the criteria fields are what we're filtering by. In this case, material number and plant. For each, we have a few options. We can do material number equals, doesn't equal, between gives us a range, in allows us to provide a list of values, like allows us to do wildcards, null, not null, etc. So for this, let's go ahead and choose between. And let's also add another option so users can either provide a range or they can provide a wildcard. All right, so for plant, let's go ahead and make this required. And we can also leave a default value in here. This can be selected as a fixed value if needed, but we'll just leave it as a default value. Now that we've selected our criteria fields and set those up, let's go ahead and take a look at the runtime tab. So the Runtime tab allows us to run a preview. So I'll go ahead and run that now. What this will do is it will pull in the first 100 records and will help me determine whether or not the query I've created is what I expect. So I'll look at the results. If I'm happy with it, I can also check the number of entries. So if I were to run this with plant 1710, how many entries would I get in my Excel file? So I would get 1,540 records, perfect. So now that we're finished with this, let's go ahead and move on to the map step. The mapping step is simple. You can simply drag and drop from the SAP field to the Excel file, 
or you can use the automap functionality. If you have an existing Excel file, you can use that as well. And now the last step is the run step. So let's go ahead and run this query. So this is going to pull live data from SAP to Excel. We'll go ahead and save our Excel file and our script. And let's go ahead and run it just for plant 1710. As you can see, we have adaptive query throttling enabled, and this will make sure that the query script does not slow down or bog your SAP system. All right, we have our results. So we have our 1,540 records. And as you can see, we have all of our values here. As previously mentioned, these can be scheduled to run if you need a report, whether that's daily, weekly, monthly. You can also just have it run overnight if needed. And you can chain scripts. So this can be used in a round trip scenario where you pull the data, clean it up, and then use transaction to load the data back into SAP. During the demo, I showed how you select the tables and fields, you set the criteria fields, we ran a preview run, and I showed the number of entries. I showed how to map to Excel and how to run the script. As you saw, query is easy to use. The application is low code, no code, there is search functionality, and there's a data dictionary to help your users. Joins are automatically added as well. You can quickly create regular or ad hoc reports and schedule them if needed. And you can use query with transaction in a round trip scenario to maintain data and ensure you have quality data in your SAP system. Thank <laughs> you.